All these years I've been trying to put these people away. And yeah, it all started because I let on away with it. Oh, Are you Shireen? Did you call us? Yeah, we're asking from 275. Yeah, I'm on the pathway estate with 361 now. Save 275. The door's locked. She went up to me and there's water. What's her name? Jenny. Jenny Watson. Jenny? How long has she been in there? I don't know. I came in a few minutes ago. And Jenny, it's PC Keen from Sun Hill. Can you hear me? Do you live here too, Shireen? No. No, it's Jenny's place. I mean, she lives at the ground. Jenny! She's out. OK, stand back. She's yeah. been funny all week. Didn't want to talk, you know? Is she alright? What's happened? Is there a pulse? Just, she's cut her wrist. Sierra Oscar from 361, on. ambulance required. On, Young girl, unconscious, on, possibly having slit her wrist. Number 17, Parkway Estate, over. It's a good thing you called us when you did. I'm Shireen's mum. We've known Jenny years. Do you know what happened? It looks like she may have cut her wrists. Come on. I've got to go. Come on, darling. Let's just get you home, yeah? Listen, I'll go with her. Um, this is a mobile. Can you contact her grandfather and tell him what's happened? Yeah, sure. And contact CID as well. Yeah, why? The paramedics say they found bite marks on her chest and bruising around her thighs. They're a few days old, but... A sexual attack. A strong possibility. What okay. good. All right, yeah. Cheers, boy. Sarge? Uniform just attended an attempted suicide in the Parkway Estate. It's a 13-year-old girl. She's unconscious and signs of an assault. 13? Mm. Okay, so you can find out. Right. Does Ken know what's happened yet? He's on his way to the hospital now. So, Shireen, what happened this morning? I just went to see if she wanted to go out or something. It's an insert day at school. How did you get into the flat? Ken keeps a key on a string behind the letterbox. Don't like me using it, though. Says I should knock. That's the polite thing to do. You two don't get on. It's dead strict, isn't it? Thinks Jen's still a kid. Well, she is. You were pregnant with me at our age, weren't you? Shut up. <laughs> so, do you know if Jenny's had any problems recently? No. She hasn't said nothing. What about at school? Boyfriends? Well, she's not allowed to have boyfriends. You're not allowed. It's Ken, isn't it? It's a bit possessive, know what I mean? I reckon Jenny's too young for makeup and boyfriends, all that sort of thing. But you can't stop them, can you? I mean, half the time, Shireen's borrowing my clothes. Yeah, right, and you nick mine. <laughs> What about Jenny's parents? Her mum and dad, are they around? Well, she never knew her dad. He went off when she was really little, you know? I knew her mum. She had a problem with drugs and she couldn't look after Jenny and that's why she comes to live with Ken. When was that recently? No, years ago when she was about eight. What have I told you about not leaving the fridge door open? Yeah, all right. Is there anyone else you'd speak to if she had a problem? Nah. She don't really hang out with any others at school. All right, Cherie. You've been very helpful. Thanks very much. Will I be able to see her? In hospital, I mean. I think it's probably best if you wait till the grandfather gets back. See you. Thanks again. Bye. DC Perkins. All right, Roger, thanks. Grandfather's at St Hughes. So, was it a serious attempt? Uh, they're giving her a transfusion. No, it's just a matter of waiting for her to wake up. The doctor reckons the bruises are three to four days old. Her granddad, Ken, seems to be in denial. All right, Roger, thanks very much. Mr. Watterson, I'm DC Perkins from Summer Hill. I need to ask you a few questions about Jenny. The doctors say she tried to kill herself, but my Jenny would never do something like that. They found some marks on her chest and on her thighs. They think she might have been assaulted. Assaulted? We think it might have been a sexual assault. What? Has Jenny said anything to you about this? No. No. Nothing. Mr. Watterson, have you noticed the change in Jenny's behaviour in the last couple of days? No, I told you. She, she's just the same. Do you know if... She has a boyfriend, or if she might have been seeing somebody, or... No. She's much too young for that sort of thing. I just can't understand what's happened. This is all... Ms. Wilson, I need to go through her things in her room, and I need your permission to do that. Yes, yes, you do what you want. Thank you. Can you stick around? Yeah, sure. Give him a couple of minutes and engage you in conversation, how things were with her at home, etc., etc. Any particular reason? Until we can speak to her, we can't rule out the fact that he might be responsible for this. I'll see. You. All right. It's unusually 
tidy for a teenager's bedroom, wouldn't you say? Hmm. Are we looking for anything specific? I don't know. I suppose anything that might help us find out what happened to Jenny a couple of days ago, why she would want to hurt herself. Listen, you take the uh, wardrobe, I'll take the desk. What do you think of a granddad? A bit heavy, wasn't it? Keeping away from makeup and boys. Maybe, I don't know. All of these look pretty plain. Doesn't seem like a clubber to me. The marks and bruises on Jenny's body, if we say that they were three or four days old, that would take us to Sunday or Monday. There's an entry here from Monday that says Craig, 11am. Well, it's a school day. I think she bunked off to go and meet him. Mm, possible. I would have been mortified if people had gone through my stuff when I was 13. I used to keep my stash underneath the bottom drawer of my dressing table. Things you didn't want your dad to find. He would have gone insane. Terry. Yeah. Sexy top and a webcam. Chat rooms, do you think? I don't know, it's possible. She meets someone online, goes wrong. Maybe she gets attacked. Wouldn't be the first time, would it? All right, I'm going to take this stuff and the computer back. Get it checked out so we can find out what Jenny was up to. But in the meantime, get down to St Hughes, talk to the grandfather, see if he had any idea about what was in that case. Okay. Has a medical exam been done to establish the exact nature of Jenny's assault? Yes, I know. After several Sorry. days, it's unlikely to find anything, but we'll do well once she regains consciousness and we get consent. Yes, OK, but when? All right, I'll hold. You got a problem, Terry? Oh, sir, I'm uh, trying to get someone to give me a technical report on Jenny's computer, but it's impossible. And computers involved how? Well, there are indications that she's been using internet chat rooms. I'm wondering if there's a link between that and the possible sexual assault. So, we could be looking at internet grooming? Oh, it's got all the hallmarks. She's a child that keeps herself to herself and she keeps secrets. Including this webcam. Yeah, I'm still here. Is that the best you can do? All right. I reckon it's going to be at least a week before they can get to it. No, it's not good enough. Terry? Mm -hmm. I've tried the usual variations of names and birthdays for the password. I just can't get into this. OK, Grace, I want you to call the Child Exploitation and Online Protection Centre in Pimlico. Talk to Superintendent Tom Faraday. Ask if you can take the computer in there. Say I'm calling in a favour for New Church. You'll understand. OK, sir. I want you to stay with this one, Terry. Try to find out what can be bad enough to make a 13-year-old schoolgirl slit her wrists rather than talk to someone about it, OK? Yes, of Could you see that Derek gets that for me? Thanks. Hello, Tom Faraday. Grace Dastry, thanks for seeing me. That's powerful stuff. Yes, it's to let the kids know that we're here to help, that they're not on their own. But uh, enough of the sales pitch. What have you got? We think it's a case of online grooming leading to sexual assault. This is a victim's laptop. But we can't get access to either her internet account or her emails. Just password protected? Well, as far as I know. Well, let's see what we can do. This way. 13. I shouldn't think she's under heavy duty security. Don't let Phil's enthusiastic zeal fool you. Underneath, he's really quite a grumpy sod. Huh? Uh, I need to keep an eye on a couple of things. Is it okay if I leave you to Phil's tender mercies? That's fine, sir. Thanks for your help. Max. Yeah, check Crimin. Look at that. Nice to know we've got so many local perverts. What do you search for? Age, sex, mixed race, and grooming. This isn't mine. Who are we focusing on? There's three of them, but one really sticks out. His name is Peter David Williams. Two of his victims were mixed race, like Jenny. All were 12 or 13. Williams went down in 1996 for 10 years for indecent assault following online grooming with his partner, Kevin McDonough. McDonough later hanged himself in prison. Shame. How long has Williams been out for? He's out on license 2005. He lives in Stratford, but it used to be local. OK. I'll tell you what, you take Williams and I'll check the others. OK. Hello. Peter Williams? Yes. DC Perkins and Sunny will CID. Can I have a word? Yes, of course. Thank you. Please, go through. Is this uh, an official home check? It's just that I had one only last week. 
I'm not here to check on the terms of your license, not unless you've broken them, of course. Ah, I see. So you suspect me of something? You write a novel? Not exactly, although it is a book, but I'm afraid it's rather dull. Translation is what I do. Mostly the Slavic languages. Technical manuals. Must take a long time on that. Well, it would be quicker with a computer, but I'm not allowed access to one, as you probably know. A friend has it scanned, converts it to a data file, then emails it to the publishers for me. It's all very long-winded, but I don't have a choice. Now, I don't wish to be rude, uh, Mr. Perkins, but I am on rather a tight deadline with this job. OK, I'll get right to it. Can you tell me where you were on Monday? Uh, let me think. Monday, I think. I was here working all day. I'll just check. Monday. No, no, I did go out. That's right. I went to the supermarket at 11 and I was back home by 11.30. Can anyone corroborate that? Here's the till receipt from the supermarket. Mr. Williams, do you always keep such a detailed account of where you go and what you do? I like to be able to show where I was and when for obvious reasons. And after the supermarket? Well, my friend came around for lunch. And then I was back here working all day. And this friend would be? Her name's Valerie Shaw. She's the one who sends the work in for me. I can give you her address and phone number if you'd like. When was the last time you were in Sun Hill, Mr Williams? When I was arrested in 1996. You have not been back since? I was a predatory paedophile, Mr Perkins. I committed my offences in Sun Hill and have no desire to go back there. Not just for my own safety, but because I don't want to be reminded of the person I was then. Seen the light. Changed man, that's all. Peter, it's me. Did you get those? Oh. Val, this is Detective Constable Perkins. He's from Sun Hill. Oh, hello. Hi. Was everything all right? It was just a routine call. Oh, it's all right. Val knows all about my past. There must have been an incident. He wants to know where I was on Monday. Well, I was having lunch with Peter until about 2.30, I think, if that's any help. Oh, helps a lot. Thank you. Well, thanks for your time, Mr Williams. I appreciate it. Oh, um, is it right that you met when you were a prison visitor? Yes. Well, how did you know? Just a guess. Is she Perkins? Is she? Well, when can we speak to her? All right, thanks, Sam. I'll be there. Bye. Jenny, this is Terry. He's another police officer and he just wants to have a quick word with you, OK? Jenny, how are you feeling now? Listen, we understand that the last thing you want to do is talk to us. But we need to know what happened to you. Does it have anything to do with the marks on your body? Can you tell us about them, Jenny? I don't know what he did. I don't remember. Just later they were there. And it hurt. Who is it that you're talking about? Oh, sir, could you wait outside for a moment? You shouldn't be talking to Jenny without me present. You need my permission. So we need to find out what happened to Jenny. Jenny, if you need to talk to us without your granddad here... So why don't we step outside for a minute? Have a quiet chat. I'm not going anywhere. She's 13. She needs her family around her. Please. I don't want to say anything else. Just leave me alone. Right, so she's terrified of him. I don't know. Maybe she's just embarrassed. Can't be easy, you know, talking about a sexual assault in front of your granddad. We checked him out on Chris and Crimin, but there's nothing. Get on to social services. They must have had a background check when they placed Jenny with him. OK. Meantime, I'll call Grace. See if she's got anyone with Jenny's computer. I'll keep an eye here. There's always a chance can I leave Jenny on her own again. That's everything she's received in the last month. It looks like somebody called Craig was a regular correspondent. 
Do you want to look? Yeah, could we see the most recent one first? Sunday, 2137. Watch your sexy, huh? Off to a good start. I can't believe I've got to wait till Monday to see you, blah, blah, blah. Looks like you were right about the grooming. There's no way that's a teenager. How can you tell from just that? Too many capital letters and full stops for a start. And you see the way he's using numbers to see you, don't forget. That's text speak, not email. Kids don't do that. He's trying too hard to seem younger than he is. Right, so who is he? Can we find out from his email address? You can track his IP and uh, get his account details. Great. Any chance of printing out the rest of his emails so I can take a look at them? Don't expect great literature. Most of it's going to be how much he likes her and how much they've got in common. He's only after one thing, so he'll tell her anything she wants to hear. Grace, is Terry. Terry, I'm glad you called. Jenny's been exchanging emails with someone calling himself Craig. There's 120 of them. The last one was sent on Sunday, but it looks like before that she was receiving two or three a day. Right, well, that fits with a diary entry I found for Monday. She was going to meet someone called Craig. It also fits with the bruising she received. So there's been no email since, no? No, nothing. But then it would make sense he'd go to ground if it was him who attacked her. We're tracing his details now. OK, well, we're still looking into the grandfather. Jenny clammed up when he walked into the room. OK, keep me posted. All right, thank you. Social services did do a thorough investigation into Ken, but they also came up with nothing. All right, listen, give Max a call back at the station, tell him where we're at, yeah? All right, mate. Terry, Jenny's just asked her grandfather if he'll go home drink from the cafeteria. I think she's trying to work it so she can talk to us alone. Good. So, Jenny, tell us about the person that hurt you. It... It was Craig. He said... I thought he was in love with me. Did Craig force you to have sex with him? Yeah. He did. You're doing brilliantly, OK? Where did you first meet Craig? On the internet. In the chat room? When did you first physically meet? I said I'd meet him at the park on Monday. I banked off school. I knew I shouldn't. What park was that? Canley. Canley Park. OK, so you get to the park. What happens then? I didn't recognise him. He was older than he'd said. and He wasn't really like the picture he'd sent me. But he said he'd only told me he was younger so that I wouldn't think he was weird or anything. How old did he say he was before you met him? Fourteen. He said... He'd never felt that way about anyone before, and that he knew it must have been a bit weird to find out that he was older, but if I just gave him the chance to let him show how much he loved me, I still wasn't sure I was going to leave. But then he got annoyed. He said I'd been leading him along. Anyone would think so, especially if they saw the pictures. What pictures? Of me. It was from the webcam in my room. He made me do things. Take my clothes off. I'm not like that. I'm not... Jenny, you haven't done anything wrong. Do you understand me? After the park, did he take you somewhere? He drove us back to his flat. How long did you drive for? Ten... Fifteen minutes, I think. I've been so stupid, haven't I? Listen, all of this is Craig's fault. It's not yours, OK? Can you describe Craig for me? He's tall, nice-looking. He's got brown hair and brown eyes. What about the flat? Do you uh, remember the address? No. It wasn't anywhere I'd been before. It was nice, though. In a basement. You know, where you could look up at the pavement, see people going past. Once you were inside the flat, what happened? He made us a drink. Not booze, just a Coke. And we started to talk. But then... I started to feel a bit weird. Dizzy. And like... 
couldn't think properly. Then I was lying down on a bed. I tried to get up, but I could feel his hands, feel his breath. But it was like I couldn't move. I just wanted to do something, but I couldn't. I couldn't. No, Jenny, listen, you're safe now. Nothing else is going to happen to you, do you understand? So what do we know about this character, Craig? Does he match anybody on the sex offenders register? Well, we've checked out some of the locals. A Peter Williams, David Cross and a Michael Trafford. Now, they either don't fit Jenny's description or they've got an alibi for Monday. I've put Mickey on checking the CCTV from the County Park area where Jenny and Craig met up. If we can spot Jenny, we should be able to see Craig and maybe identify him. OK, good. Anything back from Seops, yeah? Yeah, they've accessed Jenny's computer and found Craig's email address. We're just waiting for them to find out who runs his account. OK. As soon as you got it, don't waste any time. We've got the exchange of emails and the meeting. That's a clear case of grooming. Pull him in. You were right about this stuff. He's telling her they like the same bands, TV shows, same books. Everything she says he agrees with. Tell them what they want to hear. That's how it works best. Why do these girls fall for her? These men are clever, manipulative predators who've done this a thousand times. They know precisely what to say to flatter. Make a young girl feel special, grown up. Craig's email account is paid for by one Carl Anthony Newton. Fantastic. We aim to please. Carl Anthony Newton, 46 Brunel Avenue, Sunhill. Yeah, I've got him. Uh, he was convicted for exposing himself in Canley playing fields August 2003. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Grace. He was put on the sex offenders register for two years. He came off in 2006. Nothing since. I mean, he hasn't been caught since. You think any of them ever really changed? I think it's a bit like brown eyes. You're born with it. Some managed to control it better than others. At least for a while. OK. Let's see how we can control this guy. Anything? His brother reckons he left at about 3.30 to go meet some bird. What are you thinking? Well, if you can do it once with Jenny, you can do it again with another girl. Exactly. I'm going to get on to Grace at Sea Ops, tell her to get a warrant and get down there and get this computer straight away. Yeah. We have got a confirmed sign of Jenny meeting Newton on Monday, just like she said. Unfortunately, I left through an exit where the CCTV had been vandalised, so we lost her. After what you said, I thought we might as well look at today's footage. Mm. Nate, stop it there. Zoom in. Is that him? Looks like it. Roll it on from there. Freeze it again. That's Shireen Taylor. Listen, stay with them, will you? See if you can track where they're going. Grace, it's Terry. I want you to check Newton's computer. See if there's any emails to Shireen Taylor. We believe she could be with Jenny's attacker now. Yeah. So what are we doing about finding Newton? We'll put a trace on his mobile and Stuart's onto his bank about his credit cards. We're checking his place of work and we'll circulate his photo and description to all units. Well, oh, Grace, thanks very much. Get this. Newton met Shireen Taylor at 1545 at Canley Park. It's on CCTV. He met her at the front gate, the same place as he met Jenny. Who's Shireen Taylor? Shireen Taylor is Jenny Waterson's friend, and Shireen that found Jenny. So, I asked Grace to go into Newton's computer, and guess what? Turns out he's been emailing both girls at the same time. Right, Max, get some uniforms down to the Canley Park area with pictures of Newton and Shireen Taylor. See if anybody can remember seeing them together and what direction they might have gone in. Sir. So. Terry, get somebody around to Shireen's place, see if she's there. Also, get on to whoever's with Jenny, see what she can tell us about Newton and Shireen Taylor. Yes, boss. Roger, it's Terry. When you met Craig online, did you tell anyone else? Only Shireen. We'd been on Shireen's computer together, you know, just messing about. That's when we met him. Did you know there were two of you? It was Shireen doing most of it at first. Then he started emailing me as well. I felt like I could talk to him. Like he really understood. So I couldn't tell her, you know, when, when it happened. I'm sorry, Grandad. 
It's all my fault. No, it's no, it's not. Sh Shireen, is she okay? Is Shireen at home? Shireen, no, she rang me at work about an hour and a half ago. Says she was going out. Why? Do you know where she went? Well, you know what kids are like. She doesn't tell me anything. Just that she was going to meet some mates. Do you want one? Oh uh, no, 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 thank you. Has uh, she got a mobile? Yeah, but she's got it switched off. I tried her a bit ago. Listen, I'll tell her you want to speak to her when she gets back, but don't hold your breath, eh? I think it might be a bit more serious than that. Uh, can you bear with me a moment? Mm. If you just take a look, please. We know it was in the park today. Three forty-five. Could have been with a young girl, 13. No, sorry. Thanks a lot. For sure. Yeah, sure. You may have seen him in this area. Yes, I hold. Do we have any idea where he may have taken Shireen? Well, Uniform followed Newton and Shireen as far as Cumbernauld Street on CCTV, then nothing. There's a great possibility that they got into a car. Sir, there's a couple of things that don't add up. Go on. Jenny said that Newton drove her to a basement flat, but according to the DVLA and Newton's brother, he doesn't own a car. I suppose he could have borrowed one or rented it. But then there's the flat. Newton lives with his parents and works at a packing plant. He can't afford to rent or own a flat, and if he could, surely he'd live in it, wouldn't he? So what are you saying? Someone else is involved? Providing transport and a place to take the girls? I think that's a real possibility, yes, sir. Sir, when I ran a full visor check of Newton's known associates against local sex offenders in the area, there was one match came up, Pete Williams. I was with him this morning. We attended some sort of therapy together. Pete Williams had just come out of prison, and one of Newton's licensing conditions after he'd been done for exposing himself was to join therapy. Right, Terry, take Mickey, go back to Williams. Even if he is clean, find out what he can tell us about Newton. That's fantastic, though. Thank you. All right. Sir, just had Carl Newton's bank on the phone. Now, apparently, he uses cash card in an ATM machine about five minutes ago on Hamworth Street here. What else is in that area? Victoria Station's around the corner. Right, Stuart, get whatever units you can to go to Victoria and search the area. If he's trying to make a run for it with Shireen, he might be heading for the station. Yes, sir. And tell them to approach with extreme caution. If he's still got Shireen Taylor with him, I don't want him doing anything to endanger her, OK? Yes, sir. How long since the cash card was used? Nine minutes. I can still be here. Scott's got 595 at a Victoria coach station now. Suspect is icy one male, 25. Brown hair, brown eyes. Believed to be wearing jeans and a grey jacket. Oh, possible eyeball, not suspect. Sierra one, back up two minutes away. Can you see Shireen? Hey, over there! We're holding the bus star, sir! Can you say anything about another man? No, but she was drugged. It's possible she didn't know there's anyone else there. Missy Perkins. Terry, they've arrested Newton. There's no sign of Shireen. There's no Shireen. All right, so we're outside William's house now. We'll be aware she might be inside. Well, let's hope so. Yeah. Well, I'll look around, Mr. Williams. Why if I come in? Do you know this man? Um, yes. His name's Carl. Um, Carl Newton, I think. Where'd you know him from? He came to a few meetings of a rehabilitation group that I attended when I came out of prison. I haven't seen him since then. I do seem to recall, though, that he didn't like the group very much, didn't think he should have to attend. What, he told you that? Not in so many words, but it was obvious. You see, Mr Perkins, there are four stages of recovery from our illness. There's denial, resentment... And acceptance change, yeah, I know. Carl was at stage one, denial. And what stage are you at, Mr Williams? I have accepted what I did and who I am, and now it's time for me to move forward. What, like, change is a constant process? It can last for the rest of your life? That type of thing? You have experience of therapy. I've heard it said before. Constable, are these constant visits really necessary? I can vouch for Peter. I've been with him ever since you left before. And as for this man Newton, well, that's all in the past. You seem pretty certain about that. I am. I know Peter. I know he's no longer a danger to anyone. If I didn't believe that, we wouldn't be engaged. Well, maybe. 
But three days ago, a 13-year-old girl was abused by one man, possibly two. She'd been groomed on the internet, and now her best friend is missing. Mr. Williams, do you own or have access to another property, a flat or a house? No. Do you own a car? No. I sometimes use vowels. Recently? No, not for several weeks. I use my car every day. Peter hasn't used it for at least a month. No. Can I have a word outside, please, sir? Hang on a minute. Your boy Newton's got an email on his server. From collector number one, subject for your album. There's no message, but there's six picture files attached. Is that your victim? Yeah, there's, um, there's Jenny. That's Newton, and that's the second man. Whoever sent these must be the second man. Can you find out who he is? Yeah, I'm already on it, but uh, he's not going to be as easy to find as Newton. Why? His IP is a fairly common one used by people trying to filter out their real location. We can get it, but uh, it might take a while. Terry, it's Grace. The man you're questioning, how old is he? He's in his 50s. No, the second man is much younger than that. We've got a picture. All right, uh, thanks, Grace. You're free to go, Mr. Williams. Sorry to have troubled you again. Not to worry, Mr. Perkins. OK, what about the rest of the pictures? If I could have prints, I'll get them over to the station. You want to see them? There might be something there to identify the location. Uh, sometimes, uh, the images, they can be hard to get rid of in your head. It needs to be done. Anything on Williams? He's got an alibi. 25. I just spoke to Grace. She said there was another man involved, but it wasn't Williams. So then I know who he is. He's calling himself Collector Number One. They've started to trace with him, but Grace said it's not going to be as easy to track him down as it was with Newton. So we have to assume that Shireen is still with this man, and Newton's the only one who can tell us who he is. Mm. Who's that, Carl? I don't know. It's you, isn't it? It's you and Shireen Taylor in Canley Park this morning. No comment. Where is she, Carl? I don't know. Yes, you do. I know you do. Look at me, Carl. Look at me! Where's Shireen? Tell us now and all this goes away. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. We've got one injured, traumatised girl and another one missing. We need to get Newton talking fast. I know Newton's time, so... He was feeling frightened and isolated. I think a little bit of sympathy and understanding might go a long way here. You okay with that? I'll give it a go. Okay. You know, they found a lot of images of young children on your computer. I don't know anything about them. It wasn't me. Okay. So what you're saying is that someone else in the house put them on? I don't know. All right, look. I just, I got them by accident. As soon as I saw what they were, I erased them. I mean, I'm a paedophile. Okay. Okay, I understand. It was an accident. You know it's wrong to have an interest in young children, don't you? I mean, that's why you went to therapy, to stop it. I know it's difficult for you to face this on your own, but you don't have to do it on your own. I'll help you, if you'll let me. <laughs> I never made it to happen. <laughs> Some days I can control myself. I go online. Look at pictures. And then I hate myself for it. You know, I didn't want to be like that. I understand. 
someone else is encouraging you to do it, aren't they? Who is it? Can you tell me? It was Graham. Yes. He sent me an email. He asked where I was and said we should have a drink. So you met him? Yeah. He said there was nothing wrong with what we liked and that there were... That there were lots of young girls that wanted to go with older men. If I wanted, he said he could help me out. He had a flat that we could use. So meeting Jenny was this Graham's idea, wasn't it? Yeah. But you did meet Shireen today, didn't you? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Okay, well, where, where was that? Where's the flat? <laughs> Just lock me up. I don't want to be like this anymore. Yeah, I understand that, but I can't help you unless you tell me where Shireen is. She's... I left her in the Graham's flat. About four o'clock. I didn't want to do it again. I couldn't. He wanted for me to drug her. And when the drugs have taken effect, have sex with her. <laughs> she looked so scared. Tell me where this flat is. It's Asquith Road. What number? Number five. <laughs> Max, you and Terry go in, do a recce, tell us what it is we're dealing with. Once you've established a target, we go in. It's right. uh, 5 Asquith Road. Belongs to Graham and Emma Rixton. No previous on either of them. OK, that's the target address. I want every available body in the yard ready to go. Two minutes. Mickey, make sure somebody's got a camera. I want everything on record. Sir? Sir, I've got six pictures from Carl Newton's email so we can confirm the identity of the second man. Great. Can't imagine today was the easiest. No, sir. It was tough. The people who work there, inspirational. All units from Gulf One. Status, please. Gulf Two in position. Received. Gulf Two, take a look. You think Newton was telling the truth about not wanting to go through with it again? I think he got in too deep and he couldn't cope, yeah. Right. Uh, in the interview, you were... Confirm it's number five, will you? Golf one from golf two. Target confirmation. Lights on. No visible movement. Base up. Golf two from golf one. Hold your position. You made a real connection, though. With Newton. The way you were talking with him, it was, uh... I don't know. Why did you pick that one up from? Well, it's not rocket science, is it? You just get them to tell you what you need to know. Hmm. The light's just gone out upstairs. Golf 2 from Golf 1, can you confirm target? Yeah, I've got eyeball. Male subject, looks like he's getting ready to go out. He's putting on his coat. Yeah, he's heading for the door. All units from Golf 1, this is a go, go, go. Like this. That's this. That's this. Have a What's happening? Grace. It's okay now. My name's Grace. I'm a police officer. You're going to be okay. You're safe now. See you, Oscar from DS Carter. Ambulance required for murder assaulted by Vasquez Road. Do we make it in time? OK. OK, as soon as she's in the ambulance, get CSE in here. You call her mother. Let her know where they've taken her. There's a computer downstairs. Grace thinks we should have CEOPS look at it before we have it moved. Fine, let's get where we can. See ya. Mr. Rickson, I'm Superintendent Heaton, Sunhill, and I'm arresting you on suspicion of rape. 
You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defense if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. I want to see my solicitor. That can be arranged. Take him in. Have you got the man who did this? Yes, ma'am. Kill him. Kill him for what he's done to you. I don't think hand holding's gonna work on this one. Not that it matters. You can deny it all day long. Forensics will prove what he did. And the amount of pictures he took as well. What's such? Let's go. I demand to see my solicitor. Yeah, yeah save it for him, mate. You Is that the other one who attacked Jenny? Yeah, that's him. So, you've got a visitor in the front office. Who is it? Peter Williams. Now, <clears throat> how can I help you, Mr. Williams? I was just wondering whether you'd made any progress with the Carl Newton investigation. Well, there's been some progress, yeah. I see. I do think I should tell you that I was a little less than honest with you earlier today. When you asked me about Carl Newton, I'm afraid I didn't tell you quite as much as I could have done. Go on. When we were in group therapy together, it was clear, well, clear to me anyway, that he really was not making any progress. Didn't you tell me that he didn't want to be there? You see, it was obvious that he did have this growing interest in children and that the group sessions were certainly not diminishing that at all. So I suppose what I really wanted to say was that if Carl were to come under the influence of someone who encouraged his desires, then he might become more active. Encouraged like you encouraged Kevin McDonough? For instance? Yes. Why are you telling me this now? You know, Mr. Perkins, when you're in therapy, the very first thing they teach you is that the keystone to change is honesty. Well, I knew that I'd held back when we spoke earlier. I knew, and it was because Valerie was there. And even though she knew what I'd done in the past, I didn't want to bring it into the present any more than it already was. Does she know you're here? No. Now, I'm afraid after your second visit, Valerie decided she needed time to think about the future. Our future together. Right. I don't blame her, or you. It's very hard for people on the outside to understand that someone... someone like me, the person I was, can really change, no matter what it is they do. There's an element of truth in that. So, I suppose we never really can escape the past, can we? No matter how much we might want to be. Oh, well, uh, why don't you show this gentleman out, please? Goodbye, Mr. go back to your family after this? For every Shireen, there are hundreds of other teenagers that we have been able to save. It's about letting them know that they're not alone, that there's someone they can talk to. Why do you start with that? Well, we have a report abuse button on lots of chat room and social networking sites. You just have to press it and you're through to someone at Seop that you can speak to in total confidence. You managed to salvage anything off Rickson's computer? When you nicked him, it was signed on to a network called Sunshine in Our Lives. Peter file network? Yeah, they use it to swap stories, trade pictures. The way they operate, unless you're invited to join by an existing member, you can't get in. But because you got to Rickson's computer while it was still logged on, we can use it to see what's going on on the network. Tom, you might want to see this. 
It's the what's on box. From Domino Man to all members, APM GMT tomorrow, live show, a genuine first. Ask for a picture, Phil. What is that live show? They stream live pictures of abuse. Domino Man's inviting the other members to watch at 8 p.m. tomorrow. The more people who watch, the bigger the kick for some of them. What about eight YOWB? Eight-year-old white boy. He'll be the victim. Eight-year-old white boy. Next time on the bill. Those who show longest and hardest about something are usually the ones with the greatest interest in it. So what can we do? Keep working the photograph. Every corner. So what are you saying? We can't afford to mess up. We've got to get to that server before he does. This is impossible. <laughs>